Inkscape is a capable open source alternative to commercial vector graphics applications like Adobe Illustrator and CorelDRAW. It has a lot of features that make it shine, but many of Inkscape's most useful features are nestled in obscure areas. In this video, I'll be sharing 10 of those hidden features and how they can improve your workflow once you're aware of them. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass, which is a collection of over 50 videos where I explain every single tool and feature in Inkscape and I demonstrate how it works as well. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. In Inkscape, you can align and distribute individual nodes the same way you would align a selection of objects. To do so, use the Edit Paths by Nodes tool to select multiple nodes and then navigate to the Align and Distribute menu. You'll see a dedicated panel titled Nodes that allows you to align your nodes the same way you would align objects. This can come in handy if you're trying to alter your objects so that they have some degree of symmetry to them. We all know that you can select multiple objects in Inkscape by shift-clicking them, or by clicking and dragging a selection around them, but a lesser known technique for selecting multiple objects is to hold Alt on your keyboard and click and drag a red line going through them. This is very useful because it allows you to select multiple objects with more precision than if you were to simply create a bounding box around them. With the bounding box, you have no choice but to select every object within the boundaries, even if they're objects you don't want to select. Alt-clicking allows you to exclude those objects. As we already know, the Select tool allows you to select objects, scale them, rotate them, and shear them. What you may not know, however, is that you can do the same with individual nodes by activating a setting within the tool features of the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Within the tool settings at the top right side of your screen, you should see an icon labeled Show Transformation Handles for Selected Nodes. It's depicted as a series of four arrows. Activating this setting will allow you to edit the individual nodes of an object the same way you would edit an object itself with the Select tool. This is particularly useful for creating custom shapes with symmetry and editing your objects on a more granular level. There's various different ways to select multiple objects in Inkscape, but a lesser known method that has proven to be very useful in my own workflow is to select individual objects by fill color, stroke color, or fill and stroke color. This can be accomplished by selecting an object and navigating to Edit, Select Same, Fill and Stroke. Inkscape will then select every other object on the canvas with the same fill and stroke color. You can also select objects by just the fill color, just the stroke color, stroke style, and object type. This can be very useful when working with complex designs with many objects. I've personally found this to be useful when designing and editing patterns. Within Inkscape, there's a handy feature that allows you to open a new document based on a specific template. If you navigate to File, New from Template, you'll have the option of opening a new document that is already sized to fit a specific branding asset like a business card, a DVD color, a desktop wallpaper, or any other number of items. What you may not know though is that you can manually create your own templates in SVG format and add them to this list by navigating to C, Program Files, Inkscape, Share, Templates, and pasting them in that folder. And the next time you restart Inkscape, your custom templates will populate in that list. I've personally found this to be useful for creating templates for certain types of designs that I create quite often, like YouTube thumbnails and cover graphics for social media. Inkscape has a setting in its export menu that allows you to export multiple objects as individual PNG files, but it's easy to miss it if you're not looking for it. Simply tick the box labeled Batch Export All Selected Objects before exporting your work, and once you do export your work, every single object that you have selected will be exported as its own individual PNG file. This is particularly useful for designing something like an app icon, where you need to generate the same design in multiple different sizes. One of the biggest downsides of using open source software as a graphic designer is some of the cross-platform compatibility issues you'll run into when a client or another designer wants to send you an Adobe-specific file to work with, like Illustrator's .ai format. However, you can easily open Illustrator files with Inkscape by simply changing the file's name from .ai to .pdf. Inkscape will then treat the Illustrator file like it's a PDF file when you go to open it. This also works in reverse. If someone requests an Illustrator file specifically, just save your work as a PDF document and change the name from .pdf to .ai. 
There's many different ways to create patterns from objects in Inkscape, but one of the easiest ways is to simply select the object and go to Object, Pattern, Objects to Pattern. You'll then be able to activate the Nodes tool and maneuver the handles to adjust the pattern to your liking. Inkscape allows you to quickly convert your vector designs into raster bitmaps if you so desire. You can do this by selecting your work and navigating to Edit, Make a Bitmap Copy. Not only will Inkscape generate a raster copy of your selected object, but it will save a copy of it in whatever folder you currently have your work saved in. This is useful because vector graphics tend to retain more data than raster graphics do, and they take up more disk space because of it. This means that if you're working on a large, complex design with lots of vector objects, you may run into some performance issues with your computer. Converting your designs to bitmap can help mitigate that by freeing up system resources. As you may already know, you can generate guides in Inkscape by clicking and dragging on the rulers on the top and left edges of your document. By default, you'll be able to create both horizontal and vertical guides as well as guides at 45 degree angles. What you may not know though is that you can manually adjust the angle of the guide by double clicking it, which will bring up a settings menu. This will allow you to adjust some of the properties of that guide like its color, its position on the canvas, and its angle. This can prove useful when designing geometric shapes that need to be drawn at specific angles. That should do it for today's video about hidden features in Inkscape. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think. Did you already know about any of these features? And more importantly, now that you do know about them, will you be using them in your workflow? As always, thanks for watching.